Hello everyone, welcome back to Talking History. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Liz and on this channel I talk about anything and everything to do with history. My particular favourite era is the Tudors. I may have a slight obsession with Henry VIII. Anyway, I have so many ideas for future videos for the Tudors but those will wait as I thought it'd be a really good idea to go all the way back from the very beginning with Alfred the Great, which I've done videos on Alfred the Great working up through. Last week's video was on King Edward. Today's video is the scandalous Edward. So get yourselves comfortable, drab, 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 grab, it's, it's not gonna be a good start. Grab a drink as we travel back in time. Henry or Edwig the Fair was born around 940 and he was born to King Edmund the First the peaceful or the magnificent, and to Alf Gifu of Shaftesbury. Edwy was the eldest of Edmund's two sons, um, his younger brother being Edgar, who would become Edgar the Peaceful. Edwy had succeeded the throne at the age of 15 after the death of his uncle Edward. And Edway ascended the throne on the 23rd of November in the year 955. And he was crowned at Kingston upon Thames, like many of his predecessors before him, on the 26th of January in the year 956. Edway's reign didn't start too well and he would soon become extremely unpopular. The rumour was, at the time of the festivities with his coronation, they had to be paused, as the young king was nowhere to be seen. So Bishop Dunstan went to find him, where he was found, he was found in bed with his young sweetheart Algifu, I think I'm pronouncing her name right, along with her equally amorous mother. Hmm. It's safe to say he wasn't wearing much, including the crown on his head. So Bishop Dunstan dragged the young king back to the festivities, wearing the crown firmly on his head. And I think it would be fair to say that after this, Edry wasn't the biggest fan of Dunstan. And Dunstan would soon be exiled from the kingdom shortly after this. Edry was reported to have been extremely good looking, but, he wasn't a particularly pleasant character. He was neglectful of his duties, preferring to spend time with his girlfriend and her mother. Um, he, ignored, he ignored all of his older and more experienced advisors, preferring to rely on his friends his own age, who were just as thoughtless as he was. Edway was accused of plundering the monasteries and he deployed all of their lands, giving them to his favourites. The young king had also shamefully stripped his grandmother, Edgifu, the widow of Edward the Elder, of all of her possessions. Edway went on to marry his young sweetheart, Algifu. This was also a very unpopular move. 
the marriage was considered uncanonical, I think I'm pronouncing that right, by the church and Edway was forced to have his new wife banished from court. And this was all by Archbishop Odo of Canterbury, who had imposed this separation on the couple on the grounds that they were too closely related. Algifu was a descendant of Alfred the Ethelred the First, who was Alfred the Great's older brother. Edway was the great grandson of Alfred the Great. This meant that Edway and Algifu were third cousins once removed. I know that doesn't seem too related now, not nowadays, but at this time, the church regarded any union within nine degrees of consanguinity. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'm probably not was incestuous. Naturally, this made Edway hate the church even more than he already did. He hated being, the hatred was fueled by the vindictive Algifu and her mother. And Edway turned his hatred to Dunstan. Dunstan retired to his Clostier, Clostier. Um, but the monk's abbey was plundered by the king's men. Dunstan fled. He was hotly pursued, but he managed to reach the continent where he took up residence at the monastery in Ghent in Belgium where he remained for the rest of Edway's reign. Edway came from the ruling house of Wessex. Just remember that Wessex was the most powerful kingdom during Alfred the Great's reign. Alfred the Great made Wessex what it was. And it's here where Edway displayed his preference for. Edway, was, Edway had enforced high taxes. The Mercians and Northumbrians were fresh, frustrated at Edway's policies and they rose in rebellion. The rebels were led by Edway's brother, um, Edgar, and Odo, Archbishop of Canterbury, who the king had openly displayed his dislike for. In the year 957, the Mercians and Northumbrians renounced their allegiance to him in favour of his brother, Edgar. Edway had met them at Gloucester, um, but he was defeated and he was forced to flee. His young bride, Algifu, was tortured and she was branded and her face badly scarred and she died from her injuries. At a meeting that was arranged by the men of Kent, and Wessex in the pursuit of peace, negotiations were ensued with Edway being forced to accept that his brother Edgar as king of all the area north of the Thames. On the 1st of October in the year 959, Edway died in unknown circumstances. He was 19 years old, he had reigned for only four years and there was 
quite the strong possibility that Edway had been murdered. Whether his brother Edgar was involved in this is, is possible, but we, we, we just can't say. Edway was never popular, so he wasn't greatly mourned by his subjects and Edway too was buried in the family vault at the Winchester Cathedral. Another short video today, it brought a, he certainly brought a little bit of scandal and you can just imagine a film or a TV series on it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back next week with another video. Look after yourselves and until then, keep history. I don't know, keep up the history. I don't know, I need to work on me. Okay. But look after yourself. See you soon. Bye.